section of the video from the border post onwards, go to town section 430. To view the last and most interesting part of our ascent up the path, go to town section 510. After leaving the tar road, it soon became a 414 dirt track. Quite a few places a normal sedan would even make it through, meaning that most cars will not make it to the border post. I had Richard as a pillion and we were there with two other 4x4 vehicles. They had taken our luggage for us, so it was just the two of us on the bus. Our trip started out with the two of us being behind the two 4x4s. Quite often I would have to wait for the two 4x4s to finish a technical section and then I would catch up very quickly again. It seems like the bike is just a little bit quicker through technical sections than 4x4. As it was late afternoon, the sun was causing a lot of lens flare. And the dust in the air did not help much either. I decided to try and bypass the 4x4s and uh, hopefully get a little bit of a better video going. Here you can see that we are starting to come out of the valley and uh, soon enough uh, reaching the border post. There I just bypassed the second 4x4. Some hitchhikers on the way down. As you can see I'm using Microsoft Hyperlapse software to try and speed up the video and to uh, take out some of the shakiness and uh, hopefully make it a little bit more interesting. Most sections um, where there's not much happening it's uh, at 6 speed otherwise it is at 3 speed. Waterfall coming up, we'll stop here for a quick few photos and then we will on our way again. As you can see, there's a vehicle in front of us that sort of just appears out of nowhere. All in all, the road to the border post was not that too bad. A few technical sections which I would deem orange but mostly green. No soft sections whatsoever. As it's late afternoon you see a lot of format force coming down the path finishing their day in Lesotho. Quite a rough section. And here we arrive at the border post. passport stamps and then we were off again. Now after the border post I had switched on my camera but I had forget, forgotten to press record properly so I missed a little bit of the first bit of the ascent after the border post. Click pretty. Halfway up we stopped for a, some photos and a geocache and then the interesting part of the path started and it got steeper and steeper as we ascended. Uh, shortly we'll be entering the shadow of the mountain and the quality really improves after that. Off 
this corner, if you look ahead, you should see the zigzag of the road descending and the car in the distance. You can actually see the steepness of uh, the mountain. Now the video seems to speed up and slow down quite often uh, in little chunks. I think it's the hyperlapse uh, software doing it rather than me speeding up and down a lot with the motorbike. Most of the last bit of the ascent was done in first gear and my bike fan came on quite a few times. This means the engine was working. This is Icy Corner. Uh, it should be, I should have stopped with Richard to explore it a bit, but I want you to keep in front of the other cars and uh, was concentrating on the road. The road does not seem that steep on the video, but every now and then if you look down, you will see that uh, the steepness around each corner and uh, get an indication of how steep the pass actually really is. I decided to wait for this vehicle to come down. It also gave me a few seconds to take it in the scenery around me. Yeah, I saw this car waiting and I rode up, but as I reached the corner, got blinded by the sun and dust. And I could not see the corner properly, so that's why I stopped here, uh, sort of following a straight line. Due to the steepness, it took me a bit to get going again. through the border post. 